So I'm here with Mr. Indajit Prasad and Mr. Clyde Butts. Uh, both of them would have done commentary during the past couple of weeks in the Cricket West Indies CG United uh, Women's Tournament right here at the National Stadium Providence. Today being the conclusion of the tournament, Barbados successfully defending the 50-over title. Of course, Jamaica won the T20 Blaze just a week ago. Gentlemen, you would have been part of this tournament the last couple of weeks, as I mentioned. Uh, maybe we could start with you, Mr. Indajit. Um, your general thoughts of the tournament here at Providence. I think it was a good tournament. We have seen everything. Um, the rain intervened. A few matches weren't be able to play. We had a ground that is fast draining. Even all the rain we had, we're still having cricket. Today was one of those days. Um, the tournament, like I said at the beginning, was a good tournament. We were expecting a little bit more from our players, um, especially when it comes to batting. Um, I'm disappointed with some of the low scores we have had in the tournament. We have seen some outstanding performance as well. Individually, I think uh, um, people like Haley Matthews, the Knight sisters, they performed exceedingly well. We saw glimpses of brilliance from Shemaine Campbell. Stephanie Taylor chose the last game, that's the final, to give of her best. So like I said, the only disappointment was the little low scores that we had. That could have been improved upon. It should be. But generally, I think it was a good tournament. Right. A revised tournament because we were supposed to have the 50 over matches at three venues. But because of the weather, we had these matches here at Providence only. Your impressions of what took place over the last couple of weeks? Well, the, the first thing you would say, as, as I would say, the man, the man of the series really <laughs> is the ground staff. I think they did a wonderful job at this facilities to ensure that cricket was played. When you think that the T20 was played every other day and then this Super 50 was played every day. Uh, and to keep this ground in this shape and have the pitches play the way they played because they played very good. And then the Jeet was talking about the way how the scores were, with the low scores in, in this tournament. Uh, it, it, it had nothing to do with the pitches. Mm -hmm. I'm not taking away anything from the bowling because I think the bowlers were superb, the bowlers bowled well and they, they kept things very tight, they bowled in good areas and certainly it, they, they did wonderful. Barbados bowling of course lead in that. Mm -hmm. But I think all the bowling, all the sides in terms of their bowling, feeling Jamaica Barbados was outstanding especially in the ground feeling department and I think hence they won today as well. But again when you talk about the batting it left a lot to be desired uh, and we have spoken about that over and over. Um, of course, Haley Matthews was outstanding, and the way how she batted, not that she scored runs alone, I think the way how she batted, realizing what her team has right. to offer, the Knights batted well. Stephanie Taylor, we saw a little glimpse of it. Henry started well, faded off towards the end, but certainly, you know, it was disappointing to, to see the way how things go. And I'm sure people are going to ask, well, what happened to Guyana? Right. Um, I don't think they performed to their capabilities. At the start of this season, when I saw the team, I had questions on one person in that team, but I think the team actually played disappointing because I think it was a young team and it's a team that we can build and grow with, but something needs to happen in terms of how they approach the game and where they play the game and cricket needs to be played, female cricket needs to be played in the country if we're going to improve. Uh, Barbados and Jamaica, for obvious reasons, they are ahead of the pile. They have the majority of the international players in their lineup. What do you think the other four nations need to do to get up to that level? Well, they need to ensure that they have a special program to work it. And here is where the governing body in every territory comes into reckoning. If you are going to pick up people just a few weeks before the tournament, you're not going to have the best from them. I would like to see the structures improve in every individual territory. Club cricket is so vital. If we can't get our female players together, I'm talking about the numbers, maybe why not experiment with them like some other clubs have done. You get our females playing alongside the males. That can help. And we can never, ever forget our school system. We must ensure that female cricket is played in the school system. And not necessarily starting off with hardball. We can start with softball. We can go with wrong doors ball or what they call the flannin ball. But get them involved, get them interested. And importantly, too, we must ensure that we harness the best possible coaches in our system because we know it is more difficult to unlearn something than to learn something. So you get the right coaches to work with them, give the females a program, ensure they play cricket. So when it comes around these tournaments, we have a good pool of players that are well-trained to choose from. That can go a long way in helping. 
Our thought on Haley Matthews, she was undoubtedly the star of the tournament. Um, in your mind, what has been working there for Haley Matthews? She seems to be having that, that smooth transition between bat and ball. I think it's a responsibility. Honestly, I think when you're captain on a side and you know what your team has, mm -hmm. and you come out there, you're going to show them that you are the star. You are the one that everybody is looking towards. And I think she accepted that responsibility well and played within that responsibility. And at times, if you look at our approach to our innings, it was at no time did you see she go there and decide, I am the star, I'm going to beat ball or anything. As she's going, she went out there and built innings. When she bowled, it was the same thing. She decided, I was the best bowler, I'm going to bowl tight, I'm going to incur, um, keep things as tight as possible, make things easy for the other bowlers. I think that's what she did. And Abhinash, if you don't mind me, I add to that a little, going to school we learned a fit mind in a fit body. When you look at Haley Machu, she's both mentally and physically fit. She understands the game. She understands the awareness level. She knows what is going on around her. She knows what is expected of her as a cricketer. That's the reason why she put in the hard work. And it pays off in the end. By far, she was the most outstanding player in the tournament.